Oh, there we are. Hello, people. Welcome back. Kevin and David here with part two of the Castle Defence pack. And uh, here we go. Part two. 13 ways to deal with uninvited, unwanted salesmen, cold callers, incoming calls based on a telephone scenario. It's non-exhaustive and typical scenarios. Go. Yes, this one, I'm just thinking this one, we've, we've put that there, that's going to come later on. So this one's going to be primarily, um, this video, number two of four, will be the one, a video with the scenario with an encounter um, on the telephone as, we've, uh, as we move through. So this document is flowing, but this video is taken out of the document. So this one is just now going to be somebody, um, tradesman, peddler at the door on the property. All right, so once unwanted callers make their initial incursion, by ah by dialing your number so it's telephone sorry <laughs> we're going to go on the telephone um it's our second video and it's quite raw so to bear with us it's a telephone based um contact so once they make their initial incursion by dialing a telephone line number um, we have to be careful because there can be times of aggression and hostility from the receiver of the call because of you know not being uh, convenient and um, data wanting to be asked um, and um, there may be aggression from the, the ones coming down, making the call um, because they are intent on getting something and they may insult you by telling you there is a pigeon in your bank account and it may need cleaning and they want your bank account details, hence the, uh, the vexation that may arise. So this aggression or their aggression, the caller to the callee may end up being matched by the, uh, the, the call, you know, the one that's receiving the call. If one is not able to correspond and hold uh, a dialogue without emotiveness being a key factor. We see in here that without a clear verbatim lawful script, then that's when situations can go easily from calm to aggravated and perhaps vexatious and you know assaults, when we say assaults, physical and of, of rights uh, as in video one. Um, hence these educational sessions and uh, watch parties, etc., that we are performing today. Okay, sovereign initiates of self and law, L O R E stroke L A W. The home castle defence starts here. No longer will cold callers make our lives a misery. No longer will we take their impertinent questions lying down. No longer will we permit them to insult our property, families, lives, and intelligence by thinking we will fall for their blatant artifice. This, my loyal and honorable and clean hand, solves, will be our El Alamein, our Agincourt, and our Battle of Kursk, the turning point in our titanic struggle. Yes, I. Oh, brilliant. Well said, brother. What are <laughs> the choices at our disposal? We have um, a telephone preference service that would be known as the T Tango Papa Sierra. And there's a link to the .org in the document here that we have, which we'll not read out now because it will be made available. Anybody with DuckDuckGo can search for tpsonline.org and find the home. And you will find that this free opt-out service enables you to record your preferences on an official register, okay? I'm aware of that word and what we're saying there. Um, it's not for everybody, but it might be for some, okay? So we're giving you all options. We are not a cult. We're not telling you what to do. It's an information outlay presentation for you to make an informed decision. If you would like us to tell you what to do, then um, I, wouldn't, I don't want to tell anybody what to do, but uh, um, we can help in many ways and, uh, and give you pointers. Um, so that would enable you to go on the official register and not receive unwanted, unexpected, unsolicited sales or marketing calls. These are enforceable under public statutory law is where we're at here. And we've got some fun ways below and um, a new style that you've probably not seen from Kev and I before, um, <laughs> including short goodbyes. And uh, we've got some fun ways to deal with these uh, bottom feeders. Think of a fish tank. The bottom feeders, we're not talking, uh, you know, it's just fish tank scenario. People that live by, you know, festering on things that are not necessarily, um, you know, prime 
um, locational, you know, incomes and targets. They, uh, they're opportunists and they're bottom feeders of the fish tank we're, we're talking there. And we are, um, you know, giving you all of your uh, rights, exclusive rights and choices available to you in the, in the grand scheme of things. Excellent. So obviously now we're dealing with the telephone itself. <laughs> yeah, when telephone. they call you, <laughs> they embark on a journey into the unknown. Because, despite all their slights and slyness, they don't know if you've had an accident in the past three years, whether you've had double glazing, whether you qualify for PPI or anything else. Yet once they have made their initial incursion by dialing your number, their act of possible aggressions and intended crimes might then end up be matched by yours if one is not able to stay calm and work from a lawful script and converse correctly without emotive behaviours. Essential to repeat and for man to remember, hence thus verbatim walkthrough of how we at www.splspro.com handle our business. <laughs> yes, indeed, uh, it is business in a way, isn't it? So that's simply how, how we see it. So a swift end to a conversation could be obtained by just putting down the phone and ending the call. That means that you haven't wasted much of your time or the caller's time. You haven't cost any, anybody any money and that uh, they will be able to be free to pick on somebody else more vulnerable, you know, on the next number in the database that they happen to be calling from this call center of uh, bottom of the tank feeders. So let man um, commercially engage <laughs> them in verbal, non-vexatious communication. Take the initiative. Why not? You know, uh, by asking questions of your own. Um, as King, consider to utilize um, SPLS Pro's techniques of distraction and deception. Uh, the shock and awe of a request for a date, perhaps. The carpet bombing of logic chopping the chemical weapons of forcing them into linguistic traps. Haha, <laughs> as I imagine a great many of you do already, and in kudos to uh, our sovereign scribes of life that do that. From this day forward, never will so many cold nuisance callers be so confounded by so few. And we aim to increase the few to many as well uh, <laughs> by these presentations. Here are first hand accounts from this field of Woman's home front castle defense, and in some cases with Big Barry and Met officers present. We're talking DCAs, debt collection agents, etc., in the commercial uh, combative round. So it's uh, it's me still here, I believe. So number one. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is my boss's number. <clears throat> Can you call back? It's something you could say to someone coming in. Uh, I often and, and others, you know, have pretended to be the secretary of the person they're calling, and they they've told the caller the boss is a millionaire, and at this moment they are on their yacht in the south of Italy with. Uh, their trusty Pomeranians and wife. Um, I will kindly request that they call back in a couple of days. When they do call back, I say my boss has rushed off to another amazing place, racing cars for the Ferrari factory. And as my clan name uh, calling is Jeremita, um, that's an easy ploy for me to uh, to get to get down, you know, on paper. The next time I may say things, or you may say things like, "Your boss is on a humanitarian mission to an orphanage in Africa, and could they ring back?" So far, we have the record at six ringbacks, at which point <laughs> I was informed by the caller. They are now using me and other sovereign, the scribes from YouTube this is coming from, and Facebook. They're using us as training for staff, as we are the most evasive time wasters they have ever met. So, uh, bum shanker in Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, take a piece of the action from Goodfellas. I once spoke with a survey caller about pizzas and spent about 45 minutes saying good fellas, also known as good woe mans, to every question asked. Both myself and the questioner had a lovely time. Number three, didn't we have a hell of a time back in 1985? Do you remember? Oh, I do. Sometimes I pick up the phone, listen to their alias name, Repeat it several times in an incredulous tone, and then, boom, Shankar, I pretend to recognize them. 
I asked them if they remember the hell of a time we had at the 1985 summer camp when we set fire to the wooden shed. And I keep making things up and go on and on until they end up terminating the call. <laughs> Psychosomatic attic insania. <laughs> <laughs> Other times, I interrupt them very politely to say, sorry, I'm not at all interested. But, so that we can remain on good terms, I offer to sing them a song of my choice. I get requests all the time. <laughs> One of them, with a sense of humour and some extra time to spend, asks for an extra song. There you go. See? You've, now you're providing a service. Uh, limericks, <laughs> which we'll come to in a second. Limericks and the Circle of Life is my favourite. Reach out and touch faith. <laughs> Depeche <laughs> mode, etc. A uh, little bonus limerick for you people. It's always a good one. Oh, go on. Then. There was there was a young man from Devizes whose testes were two different sizes. The left one was small and no good at all, but the right one was big and won prizes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Another little one here. Uh, or a friend of mine can pretend to have an asthma attack <laughs> during this call. <laughs> so, so thank you for that. These are all um, coming from the uh, the ether. These are not our claims and ideas wholly. They are coming from a great many various sources, and they are just ideas of what you can do when your private time and your private line has been uh, engaged with and um, you are free to choose. There is no um, advice here. This is just informative um, collation of uh, how others around the realm and on the internet all around have, have given their information as to, as to how we deal um, with these uh, you know, unsolicited encounters, engagements. The person that uh, you have called, you could say, this has uh, come from the, the World Wide Web, not I, or uh, Kevin, it's, it's been put into the document uh, as, a, as it's been found. The person you have called has been murdered. And this is CID. The best uh, we've heard of was answering as a detective at a crime scene. This is very, very, um, you know, uh, intricate. Um, I'm sure that the impersonating an officer would be put on that. Uh, you know, we're going to amend this bit of the document here because I've had a, a little flag come up. So somebody has said, we're not telling you to say this, but somebody has pretended... Mm -hmm that they're at a crime scene where the person uh, the caller wanted was indeed a murder victim. You know, this is fabrication and danger here, but they asked where they was calling from, um, a call across to a fictitious CID colleague to get the caller's local police to visit him, sends the caller into a state of panic, asking how he knew the person, what relationship they had with them, puts them on the defensive. So that come from the internet, but uh, myself and Kev, and um, SPLs Pro wouldn't advise, um, you know, these things are a little bit above the line. So we've given you some comical ideas and then we have brought out here um, something a little bit more, um, you know, intense and scary, to be fair. And murders and police, I wouldn't go down those lines. I'd be very, very careful on whom you say you are and what you, you, you want to do in the name of fun because it can quickly, as, as we found, escalate into other things. And um, if you scare somebody like that on the phone, they don't know it's a joke, so um, things can happen afterwards. It starts with fun and it can end with tears. So we're here again just to stipulate um, your choice. You do what you want, but uh, just be aware. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could just just to, uh, as a little add on to that. Instead of maybe claiming, if you were to you if you were to use that similar scenario. I would suggest you don't make yourself um, a CID or anything like that because that could be impersonating or classed as. But you could be a senior, senior crimes. You could be a senior crimes because they're civilian. And of course, you'd probably catch out the person on the phone, probably won't realise the difference. But there you go. Can you repeat, okay. you broke up. Can you just repeat that last sentence or two? Scenes of crime. Yeah, I was just saying, up. right, ra rather than rather than saying you're a CID officer or a police officer, obviously that has implications for you making that claim it could become rather unpleasant. You could claim to be a scene of crimes officer, which is a civilian. So you're not pretending to be something you're not. Aha, thank you. Well said. Okay. So just glad, a thought. Glad we went over just that. Just a thought. Then. That's important. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, Caesar, Caesar crimes are civilians. So you're not claiming to be somebody 
who's a, a, of an authority you don't have. Anyway, moving on. To, uh, number five, whistle while they work. <laughs> it's really a blast. Keep a whistle by the phone, then consider giving them a blast on it. It is amazing how quickly they may complain and or even hang up the call. <laughs> given to us via a scribe over an indigo chat with Rosie Kelvin on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it was. That's where that came from. And um, Number six, turn the tables. Become the salesperson. Try to sell them something and be very insistent. It works well. Also good for door-to-door -door salespeople, especially if they're wearing poor shoes and trainers. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Place and order. If there are um, no money details up front, uh, the best I have been able to hear on this is consider agreeing to buy new fitted aluminium gutters um, when the truck and fitting team arrived to find that the man had actually a thatched roof. They asked him if he was stupid, to which the homeowner readily agreed, I am an idiot, yes. <laughs> <laughs> time wasting, basically the time wasting there. Uh, yeah, no deposit, no deposit taken, turning up to do the work to find out, you know. Fair play. Let their proposals fall on deaf ears. Consider telling them one is very interested but a bit deaf. What? What'd you say? No. <laughs> One's hearing aid is not working properly and can they speak up? The idea is to deliberately mishear what they say. Ask them to repeat, only louder. See how loud one can get them to shout. After a while, one may say, I'm not really deaf, and we're just wasting their time, as they were doing with me. Fun for all the family, a game we can all play in turn. Do not be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> um, married, are you? Are you married? Well, maybe one's wife has just left one for another one's best friend. Why not keep a caller chatting for at least half an hour? Have tremendous fun. When the caller asks if one would be willing to answer a few questions, I said, absolutely, I'd be delighted. <laughs> then, uh, thank you. Thank you. May I ask which age bracket you fall into? Wait there, I've just lost my place. It's uh, <laughs> a bit of, what did you just say there? Um, thank you. May I ask which age bracket you fall into? Uh, 50 to 60, but I've been told I'm not likely to make it into the next bracket. Oh, can I ask, are you married? Yes, you may. I was married up until two weeks ago. My wife left me for my best friend, Big Barry. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But do you own your own home? <laughs> I did, but my wife wants me out. Her and Big Barry are moving into it a week on Tuesday. Week of Tuesday. Well, I'm sort of sorry to hear that too, but do you own a car? <laughs> well, I own a what? A car? Um, I couldn't pay. I own a bike. Well, I say I own a bike. It's Big Barry's. He's going to want to borrow it, but take it back anytime soon, I suppose. <laughs> Any pets? <laughs> um, uh, a cat, Tom. Pet insurance? <laughs> no need. I'm looking at Tom's freshly dug grave. Dug it myself two days ago. Rest in peace, Tom. <sighs> Have you had an accident in the past three months that didn't involve your cat? No. <laughs> yes. That wasn't your fault. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, uh, yes and no. <laughs> what type of ac accident was it, please? Well, um... It was my own fault, actually. There's no one to blame. I lost my left leg just below the knee. I'm having a new fitting tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Well, uh, that concludes all the questions I have for you today. Oh, really? Uh, do you have to go? I, I am able to answer a few more questions, if you like. I haven't spoken to a soul in three days. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bailing. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs> oh, please, please don't leave. I have more to say. Um, that was it. My queen was sitting with me at the entire time. We both really enjoyed ourselves. Um, and we got another little bit here, Kev. Uh, oh, yes. 
is this a convenient time to talk? Not uh, at the moment, not particularly. I'm in the process of shaving uh, my cat as it's having an operation tomorrow. Could you call back in a couple of days when I'll have more time? <laughs> uh, shave cat works every time, people. It's a there's def chicken, chicken, <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Shave cat every time. Anyway, <laughs> how am I today? Let me tell you all my problems. Most callers irritatingly ask, how are you today? So I decided to waste their time by telling them I am not well and asking if they could talk to me about my problems because I have no one else. After deciding on this tactic, my first nuisance call was from India and related to something being wrong with my Windows operating system. The agent stroke caller asked, how are you today? And I launched into my hard luck story and asked if he could spend time to discuss my problems. I was rather taken aback when he said yes. Rather ashamed of myself, I mumbled that I was just testing him and I put the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to test. Um, <laughs> you can get some of your own waiting on hold music. That's an idea. Um, Anna Maria deals with nuisance calls sometimes by saying she needs to find some information for them and puts them on hold. She then puts the phone next to the music speakers and leaves them to listen to very loud music while she gets on with housework. Um, one of the window scammers was still on the line waiting at least 40 minutes for him to give the information to hack the computer, to get the information to hack the computer. I'm spelling there, I'll get that correct. Yeah. Was, was I bad at my job? <laughs> uh, number 12, keep me laughing all the way to the bank. I used to work at Halifax as business development manager, a business development manager, and help launch a 4% current account, which was very successful. So when I got a cold caller, I would ask them who they bank with and point out that if they transferred their salary to Halifax, they would earn 4% while the other banks were offering 0.1%. The reaction was great. A third found it funny. A third would get angry, which was great fun. And the final th third said they might be interested. Two callers said they would go to a Halifax branch to investigate further. A potential sale for me. Win-win. I, 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 I like that, Kevin. I'd just like to point out that I have um, helped put that section in there. And I was given that via um, the ethereal um, internet. And uh, Kevin, neither I... Um, are in fact at that uh, Halifax Building Society that was just given to us. Um, we're not promoting that or anything, even though we've said the word, it could be any building society in any continent. It doesn't have to be that, that branch there. And um, just, uh, just know that we took that in tongue in cheek um, for the, the fun of it, that's it. All right, so you can change that to whichever one you want. And um, those, those uh, interest figures may, may and won't be, in fact, they will not be the same now due to the current uh, pandemic that the realm's going off hence these videos so um don't take that as gospel it's all fictional for fun and um, i've got lots of cash on my card is this me now is that where we are yes yeah i've got lots of cash on my card but it's on top of it during one particularly enjoyable nuisance call from one of the recent opportunist telephone phishing scammers i was asked if i had a bank card yes um, and they asked what, what, it, what it was like. It's, uh, it's about three inches by two inches and it's plastic. What does it say on it? Uh, I, I've left this bit for you to ins insert your store card, um, discount <coughs> card name there. Okay. <laughs> um, we spent quite a few minutes discussing banks and numbers on cards, but unfortunately, and despite my very best efforts, I wasn't too helpful to him. I even accused him of not listening properly as I had to tell him a few times about my store card um, there. I did confirm when asked if I sometimes was putting money on it. I said, when I take the cash out of my pocket, I sometimes pile it up on top of my store card, point discount card, you know, that, that whichever one it is. Um, but not every night. <clears throat> sometimes I happen to leave the card at the side of the money. This phone call had lasted approximately 80 minutes so I decided to put Agent out of his misery and told him I was having a, a giraffe. I was having a joke there. We're having a babble, mate. He didn't twig at first. So 
um, I said, I wasn't really having window problems on the iPad. And the agent <laughs> replied, but how can you have window problems on your iPad? He said, and then he twigged. <laughs> <laughs> that brings us to the end of this, uh, of this video number two presentation. And um, scenario two is finished. So thank you, Kev, for that. Is there anything you'd like to say in an addition before we, uh, we end this Just one? Just have, have fun with them. Have fun with them if these people call up. Drag it out as long as possible. Just speak over them all the time. Talk your story. Tell them all about your childhood. Doesn't matter what they say. Just keep speaking over the top of them. Have fun. Waste their time. They deserve it. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you, uh, scribes, initiates, uh, masters of self and law. Um, we'll be back soon with number three. All right. Thank you very much. Ciao. Indeed. Thank you, Kevin. Bye.